Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Stormfield.tv, and today what I want to do is talk to you about building an infinite scroller. All right, and right here you will see that we have four different movie clips that are just scrolling across in this little area here, and it appears to be an endless supply of movie clips. We have pink, orange, green, and red, and they just keep coming one after the other. And what I want to show you here is my lob off technique where really what we're doing is after each tween we're taking off whatever movie clips are hanging off for off over the end here and moving them back to the beginning um, this is all transparent to the end user um, but I want to show you exactly how we can scroll in any number of items and keep them going forever and ever and ever without actually uh, duplicating anything okay so in order to see how this is working I have this toggle mask functionality built in and you can see a little bit of what is happening behind the scenes. You'll notice after each tween, the end clip is being chucked back to the beginning. Now, that transition is all very harsh, um, but what I want to point out is that no one is ever going to see that when the masking is on. It all looks very smooth and clean, all right? Once the uh, orange clip goes to the right, it's going to go to the left and then tween back in. Once screen gets off screen, it shoots back over and comes in. Again, if I turn the mask back on, you'll see exactly what is happening. So what I'm going to do is show you a little bit of code that I'm using to take that last item and move it back to the beginning and do all the shifting around. Now, this is going to be a very simple undertaking at first, uh, but what this is going to lead up to is a very dynamic approach to this. And what I have going on here in infinite scroll advanced we'll be doing this next week most likely um, I want to show you that I have a lot more clips I have all the Adobe icons here here you can see my mask and what I'm gonna be doing is moving three clips at a time alright and if we just sit back and watch this is gonna to appear to happen forever infinitely okay but it's using the same technique once it scrolls to the right the last three items get lobbed off and sent back to the beginning. And if I turn the masking on here, you can see exactly that. All right? So all three here, boom, go back to the beginning, and then the next three come in. Photoshop, InDesign, and Flash, get lobbed off, go back to the beginning. Now, when the masking is on, again, it's totally transparent to the user what's happening behind the scenes there. Now, why this is so super cool is because I can take this mask at any time, change its width. Each icon is 44 pixels wide. So let's just say it's going to be 44 um, times 2. All right? We're going to get 88. Let's just align these two things together here. And notice that I'm not touching any code whatsoever. Okay? So I've just changed the width of my mask, and that's automatically adjusting how many items scroll and also how many items get lobbed off. So if I toggle the mask, flash and flash builder, boom, go back to the left, Photoshop and InDesign, boom, go back to the left, and then the tween happens again. So it's totally flexible and dynamic. In order to do something this cool though, we need to understand the basics. So one more time, let me just take the width of that mask and say let's make you 44 times 4. So that means that we will be displaying whoops, and tweening four things at the same time. So let's just select the mask, do 44 times 4, we get 176, and let's just align these things to have the same right edge, slide them over, and again, just watch. I didn't touch any code, right? Now four icons transition at once, and this can run forever, and it will look like it's just an endless loop of icons. When the mask is this wide, I can also say, you know what, let's only show one item at a time. And to do that, let me just pull my actions out here. And I'm going to say the distance to scroll is going to be based on the width of one of those icons. So here I'm changing one number, but notice now that each time it scrolls, only one new icon gets pushed in, and only one new icon is going to get lobbed off the end and move back to the beginning. So here it's a very dynamic and flexible approach. So what I want to do now is just walk you through the whole lob off routine. 
Now, in order to show you exactly what the code is doing, what I have done is I've built this slow motion um, lob off effect. And what it's going to do is walk us through one step at a time the code. So let me just explain this real quick. Every time this container here tweens that has these A, B, C, and D clips in it, it's going to move 100 pixels to the right. Okay, so that's the first thing we want to do. We're going to do this scroll it function, and I'm going to tell this parent MC to move 100 pixels to the right. So I click this, and there you see the scroll. So we've moved the container 100 pixels to the right. Now what I need to do is lob off this D and put it back in the beginning. So what I have is this reset function that gets called whenever that tween has completed. And what's going to happen is that we're going to do this for each loop, which is going to loop through every movie clip inside of the parent MC. So we have MC1, MC2, 3, and 4. And I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Let's tell every clip to move over 100 pixels. So this is all going to happen instantly to the viewer. But in this little demo here, I'm going to show you what happens when we move all four clips over 100 pixels. Well, what happens is the D gets pushed outside of this container here. You see the green stroke. And this striped pattern here is the background of the container. So what I've done is I've taken everything, moved it over 100 pixels, and now I have room for that D clip to go back to the beginning. So inside of my little loop here, I'm saying find the rightmost clip and set it back to the left. So I'm asking, hey, if one of these MCs has an X value of 400, all right, the width of this clip is 400 because each clip has a width of 100. So we have X of 100, 200, 300, boom, 400 is right here where the D is. So it's going to say, hey, you know what? Let's take that D and move it to an X of zero. So here, we've moved all the clips 100 pixels to the right. The next step is going to be to slide that D back to the left. And again, this will all happen instantly. Well, now what's happening is that I'm seeing D, A, B. Well, I don't want to see that. I need to take the whole container and now chuck it back to the left 100 pixels. So once all that other shifting is done, I'm telling the parent to go back to its original start X value, which I set as soon as this Swift loaded. So if I hit step through, it goes back to ABC. So that's all slow motion. Now it says, hey, you know what? I'm ready to scroll again. So look what's going to happen. Everything's going to move to the right, okay, at once. And then we're going to shift the internal objects of that parent over to the right by 100 pixels. I'm going to take the C and lob it off. And then we're going to shift everything back. So it says DAB. All right. Now I'm ready to do another transition and bring the, tw the C in. So I have CDA. Again, I have to get B back to the beginning and be left with only seeing CDA right here. So we're going to slide everything over. Take that. B I'm out of time. Oh, no. Excuse me. Let's take that B. Slide it over and then move everything back, and we're back to CDA. What I want to do now, hey, if you have the time to stick around, I'm going to build this from the bottom up and just show you how it all works, in case you're not familiar with how the for loop works or any of that. So let's go to infinite scroll start. All right, and here I have the same basic setup. I have this thing here called parent MC. Inside of it, I have MC1, MC2, MC3, and MC4. On the stage, I also have this clip called Mask MC. And what I'm going to do is programmatically set this Mask MC's, sorry, we're going to tell this Mask to be actually Mask the parent. All right, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, what I want to do is bump, 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 go into my code and show you that I have just a little bit of code set up to programmatically tint the backgrounds of all of these. Um, movie clips inside of here where we have all these blue boxes with a white A. Well, we're going to change those blue boxes to different colors. We have BG background MCs inside of all those, and we're also going to set um, the text. Okay. Um, we also have in here our scroll it function, um, which is going to take care of scrolling or moving the parent container, and we have our reset function sort of set up. So let's just see what we have right now.
We're going to test this out, and you'll see what we get is A, B, C, and D. So we did all the different color changes, and we have the text changing to different characters, and we do one initial scroll. All right, so on load, this thing will automatically configure itself and do one scroll. Now, how does scroll it start? Well, all the way down at the bottom, we're saying, hey, tween light, wait a second, and then call the scroll it function. Now, we're already set up to have this reset function called, and I already put a for each loop in here. Now, the for each loop will loop through all the properties of a parent object, or, or any object, I should say. So if I do a for each loop, what I'm doing is literally going through that parent movie clip and getting all of its child properties. So let's just do this real quick. I'm going to trace out the value of MC. And what you will see is when that tween is done, the output says, hey, I have four movie clips in there. Okay, so it knows that there's one, two, three, four clips inside of the parent. Now, I told you in my slow-mo version, what I'm going to do is offset all of these clips over to the right so that I have room to take the last clip and bring it over to the left. All right, so I'm just going to say, hey, each MC, your X is going to be adjusted by 100 pixels. So now once that tween finishes, boom, you'll see we have this little bit of a jump here. Okay, now I want to take the D and bring it back to the beginning. So I'm going to be asking the question, I'm going to say, hey, if the MC that we're currently dealing with has an X value equal to 400, then we want to lob it off and move it back to the beginning. So we're just going to do this. I'm going to say, boom, MC.X equals zero. So we made space for that last movie clip from the end to go back to the beginning. And now we're putting it there. So here you'll see that the D jumps back to the beginning. And we'll do that one more time. Slide, D goes back. Again, this is all going to happen instantly. Um, if we want to see this in slow-mo, no problem. All right, what we just did was this. We had everything move. We slid everything over 100 pixels, and then we took the D and we moved it back to the beginning. So that's how far we've gotten so far. Now, the last thing we need to do is offset everything back to the left again so that everything lines up. And by that, I mean, let's just do the slow-mo version one more time, sorry. So once that D comes back in, well, we want everything moved over to the left, so the D is off screen, so we got to shift back, okay? We want to do that move right there, slide everything back so that we can slide the D in. So what we're going to do is this, go back to my actions in my start file, <coughs> and once we've moved that thing out of the way, we're then going to say, all right, outside of my loop, let's just format this code so it looks nice. So once we've looped through everything, we're then going to tell the parent MC that its X should be equal to start X. And what's start X? Well, as soon as the file loaded, I recorded the current position of that parent MC. All right, I'll show you why I did that in a second. All right, so let's just go through, and there we go. Toggle mask, try it one more time. We slide, and then the D jumps back to the beginning. You can't even tell that everything is being offset. It's happening in an instant. Now that that D is back in the beginning, it's now time to slide everything over, the entire parent, over to the right again. So this is how our loop is going to become infinite. Because once the reset function runs, it's going to call the scroll function one more time, or scroll it. So I'm just going to put in a delayed call here tween light dot delayed call and we'll wait one second and then we'll call scroll it again all right and so that's it there we go there's our infinite scroll we're going to lob off the a bring it back to the beginning same thing with the d the c all that if i toggle the mask you don't see any of that behind the scenes you can just sit back and watch and the scroller will play forever and ever and ever and ever and ever.
turn the masking back on, and then you can see the whole lob off routine. Again, this is a very simplistic approach, but we are heading into a realm where this is going to be much more dynamic. Again, if you want to just see what we have waiting for us, go back to the advanced file one more time. And here, we're not lobbing off just one clip, but another. I think the dog has something to say. All right, so there we go. We are lobbing off one clip and then bringing it back to the beginning. If I want to lob off more clips, well, let's just use the maskmcs.with. And I don't touch any code from this point out. All right, there you go. Infinite scroller with lob off. All right, guys, definitely um, download these files, practice, so that when we go into showing you the advanced scroller, um, you know exactly what it is we're starting with. All right, folks, talk to you soon.